Hello, and let's get started on our lecture on limits and continuity. Now, as I've said before, most of what we do in this course is just an extension of things you've done in a previous course. So let's review what a limit is. The basic idea of a limit is that as our input of a function gets close to some value, then the output should also get close to some value. So let's think about what that means geometrically. We're going to have a vector x, y be our input, and it will approach some specific a, b. So here's our vector a, b, this red one here. And we're going to say, what would it mean for x, y to be close to it? Well, it could be maybe like over here. This is pretty close. But it might also be over here. That's pretty close. Depending on what we mean by pretty close, that is to say it is however close we want it to be, we can make it get that close. So if the definition means that the endpoints of the vectors have to be close to the endpoint of this red vector, well, we could think of it like this. We could draw a little open ball around the endpoint of the vector and say another vector is close if its tip is inside that ball. So what I might think of it is something like temperature. Let's say the temperature at a, B is 10 degrees Celsius. Well, then we might say we want a ball where inside it temp is between, let's say, 9.9 .9 degrees Celsius and 10.1 degrees Celsius. So this is really what a limit is. It's saying we know that whatever thing we're measuring, which in this case we're saying is temperature, that at A, B, it's 10. Or maybe it's not, but we want to know around there, is it close to 10? Of course, it could be there's a hole at 10. This is where we mix up limits and continuity. But this is the big idea. We want to say that everywhere in this ball, the temperature is close to 10 degrees. And so if we were to take this function, as we said, we can take this ball. The function f will send us to a subset of the number line. And we'll say maybe 9.9 .9 and 10.1. No matter what point you pick in this ball, it lands somewhere in that interval near 10. And that's the basic idea of a limit. Um, most of your engineers, you might have heard the term error tolerance. If we are saying, in this case, we can tolerate it being off by as much as one degree Celsius, is it possible to take a small enough piece of our domain that on that we never have an error bigger than 0.1 degree Celsius? If so, then that's the limit. Now, I should say the limit doesn't require it to even be defined at AB. Uh, a visual, the textbook is good with visuals. So this is sort of what we did. We say epsilon is the amount of error we allow. We're saying if we allow it to be as much as epsilon off of L, then inside this ball, everything is within that error tolerance. But you can also see it in 3D form as elevation. So we're saying this slanted plate here 
that at this point here, AB, everything around there, the height is pretty close. So if there was like a sheer cliff drop where it just was vertical there, then that limit probably wouldn't exist because you could just take a very small step and suddenly your height changes by thousands of feet. All right, so that's the big picture. Let's talk about how we actually find one of these. And unfortunately, we've got some bad news, which is that there are infinitely many paths to any point, and that can make it very hard to prove a limit exists. Let me show you what I mean by that. So, we have our point, well, let's do it the way we're doing it. We've got a vector here, A, B. A, B. Why am I? <laughs> Let me try and redraw that. That our vector could come from this direction or from this direction as we are changing as we allow the vector to move. There are so many different paths we could take to get to that point. And, or if we just think of it as a point, it might be easier rather than thinking of it as a vector. Let's just consider it a point here, A, B. Like I said, we can always switch between points and vectors whenever it's convenient. So if we have a point A, B, there's lots of different paths to take from it. Because if you remember back in Calc 1, you had left-hand limits, like X approaches A from the left, and you had right-hand limits. And if they both match, the limit exists. That doesn't work here in multivariable calculus, because there are so many different paths we can take to the point. So sadly, that sort of method of exhaustion doesn't work. We can't just try all the paths because there's always going to be more of them. Here's another path. Here's another path. Here is another path. So this is a trick. It is hard to prove that a limit does exist. However, if a limit doesn't exist, then we can prove that by showing the two paths give a different result. So let me explain, if it's not entirely clear yet, what I'm saying is that if the limit did exist, every path would give us the same answer. But if we can find two paths that give different answers, the limit doesn't exist. Let's do an example here. In fact, let's do several examples because I think this will clear it up. So f of xy equals x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared. Does the limit exist at 0, 0? So I'm going to show you how we do this. So let's clear this. And I'm going to say, all right, so it's f of xy is x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared. Someone's going to say, why is that a z? So let me fix that and make sure clear that's an equal sign. All right, so there are a few ways we could approach this. Now, like I said, it can be pretty hard to show whether a limit does exist or not. But we're going to try to do a test. So let's draw our, okay. does the limit exist at 0, 0 is the point of interest. As the other places don't really cause a problem, it's that zero denominator that makes this tricky. So I'm going to name two paths, and I'm going to show you some notation that will make this easier, in my opinion. And so... I'll just go ahead and tell you, this will be a quiz on Monday. It will be on this idea of showing that a function, a limit doesn't exist by showing that two paths give different results.
I won't necessarily tell you what paths to use, but in this case, in this example, I am. So we approach zero zero from two different directions: one along the x-axis, one along the y-axis. So let's do p1 first. So this is how I like to write it. Say so I say the limit as x y approaches along p1 0 0 well along p1 y is 0 because this is the x axis this is the y axis so as we approach on this way y is 0 everywhere and x approaching 0 from the left um let me write f of x here or f of x y so that means since y is 0 in here, we can take the f function and replace the y with 0. And since x approaches 0 from the right, we will say 0 plus of, so now let's plug in 0 for y, x squared over x squared. That is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1, which is 1. Now, on the other hand, if we go limit as x, y approaches along p2, 0, 0, and make sure you've labeled these on your graph, or else I won't know which one is p1 and which one is p2 of f of x, y. Well, along p2, x is 0, and y is approaching 0 from the positive side. So this is the same as limit as y approaches 0 plus, let's replace the x's with zeros. So it's negative y squared over y squared is negative 1. These are not equal. So limit does not exist at 0, 0. So the idea here that I want you to get your head around is imagine this... There's a spot here. Put See what this would look like in x, y, z. That if we approach along the x-axis, the limit as x of 0 is 1. So it would look like we're going up here, we're going up, and we'll stop here at a height of 1. But if we approach along the y-axis, it instead will go down and stop here at a height of negative 1. So two different paths give a different result. We can't really say the limit at 0, 0 exists then, because depending on which direction you go, you can get very different results. So this is the standard way to prove a limit does not exist, is to come up with two paths and then show that they give different results. All right, let's do another example here. So let's see, next one. F of xy equals xy over x squared plus y squared. Again, does the limit exist at 0, 0? Well, let's give it a shot. So we get f of xy is xy over x squared plus y squared. Okay, so we'll do the same way as before, p1. So let's do limit... As x approaches 0 from the right, and you can go from the left if you preferred, but, well, then you'd have to put in negative x, or, no, you wouldn't, but, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter which direction you go from, just as long as you're careful about it. Anyway, as x approaches, okay, sorry, I need to do the notation properly, I'm getting ahead of myself. The limit, let's write this out fully, is xy approaches along p1, 0, 0, of f of xy. 
Yeah, sorry. You know how it is sometimes where, like, your mind is ahead of you or if it's something you've done enough times, like when you're driving and you look up and you're like, I didn't even know where I was going the last ten minutes, but suddenly I'm home. It's kind of like how it is for me with some of these because I've done them so many times I forget to show what I'm doing and just jump straight to the end. Well, anyway, this is like X approaches zero from the right, so we will place the Ys with zeros... The x's will stay x's. 0 over x squared plus 0. That's just 0. Okay, so the limit is 0. Let's try another path, P2. P2. Limit as, y, as xy approaches 0, 0, f of xy along P2. bigger p2 there we go is the same as limit as y approaches zero plus of uh, replace all the x's with zero this time zero over zero squared plus y squared is zero okay so now i know it's tempting to say oh they gave me both zero so that must be the limit and well, it tells me that the limit can't be anything other than zero, but it's not going to work this time because we need to try another path. Let's try a diagonal path. So this is 45 degree angle here. This is the line y equals x. So... The limit as xy approaches along P3, 0, 0, of f of xy. Well, since x and y are the same thing here, we can just replace the y's with x's, or vice versa, and give us limit as x approaches 0 plus of f of, or Okay, let's replace all the y's with x's. So we'll get x squared over x squared plus x squared. That is, limit is x to 0 plus of x squared over 2x squared, which is limit as x to 0 plus of 1 half, which is 1 half, which is not equal to 0. So the limit does not exist at 0, 0. So you see what I'm saying here is just because the first couple paths give you the same thing doesn't mean the third one will as well. And just because the first three give you the same thing doesn't matter and the fourth one would. Like you could do many different paths like um, what if we came in along a parabola? Y equals X squared. So then you would replace the Y with X squared and you might get something entirely different going that way. There's more paths than you could ever test by hand. So what are we to do? Well, there is some good news. For starters, if we can just plug in directly, it works. Um, so what I mean by that is like, if we said what's the limit instead of 0, 0, the limit is x, y approaches 1, 1 of f of x, y. Well, there we just plug in 1 there. We get 1 over 2 would be the answer. Because you just plug it in, there's no zero denominator or anything. Um, but I would say that in this class, that is your main thing. That most of the time, if you're allowed to plug in directly, it works. If plug in directly does not work, you have to try to find two paths that don't match. And if you can't, then it probably, the, that probably is the limit. Once you've done five or six paths, that's probably not going to have five or six paths all be the same and have it not exist, but it could. So I'm going to say, just as a teacher cheat here, basically, which is that I wouldn't really be able to 
give you a problem that says prove the limit does exist because that's not really something we're prepared to teach in this class. It's a little more complicated in most cases. So if I gave you a problem that says does the limit exist, the answer is probably no, and you just have to find two paths. And so I'm telling you right now, the quiz on Monday will be does the limit exist, and it'll be up to you to find two paths where it doesn't match. Let's do an example where it does, where it does exist. And I just to give an idea of how this might work. So this example, I'll just, yeah, it, this is not something that you would have to do on a test for sure. You might have something like this show up on a homework. Does this limit exist at zero, zero? Now, my instinct is that, yeah, the limit's probably zero here. And that's because the top is a third power and the bottom's a second power. So it makes me feel like the top's going to shrink faster than the bottom. But that's just a hunch. Hmm. Let's see. So let's see if we can figure out if that limit exists. All right. Let's see. So maybe you tried a couple paths first. Limit as x, y approaches 0, 0. And let's do the one where we say set y equals 0 and let x go from the right. I don't know if that was path 1 or path 2. But we'll plug in 0 for y. We will get 0 over x squared plus y squared equals 0. So, well, we say that one of the paths give us 0. So that means if any other path gave us something different, the limit wouldn't exist. Therefore, either limit equals 0 or it does not exist. Think about why that is here. If all the paths gave us zero, all infinitely many of them, then the limit would be zero. But if any one of them gave us something else, then it wouldn't exist. There's no way the limit could be one or whatever because we already know one of the paths is zero. All right, so is it possible then what the definition of limit says we would want the f of x, y minus 0, small. Small when x, y close to 0, 0. Can we show that? Well, we can do a little algebra here. 3x squared y over x squared plus y squared. And let's do some factoring. It's an absolute value. Um, there is a minus zero in there, but the minus zero obviously doesn't really matter. I'm going to factor out all the squares because a square is always positive, so therefore it doesn't really matter if it has an absolute value or not. So let's make this 3x squared over x squared plus y squared times absolute value of y. Well, this thing here, this piece, has got to be, <clears throat> make sure I'm saying this right, it's got to be less than 3. Or let me, sh let me do this properly. Or sorry, this is equal to, this is really tricky, so I'm taking my time, equal to x squared over x squared plus y squared times 3 absolute value y. Now this piece is always going to be less than or equal to 1 because the denominator has got to be larger than the numerator. So that means this is less than or equal to 3 absolute value y. 
So what this told us is that uh, the f of x, y that we started with, or the, ab the absolute value of f of x, y, which is what this here was, is less than or equal to 3 times the absolute value of, pos of y. And saying some positive number is less than some, or saying the absolute value here is, is less than, sorry, I, I'm talking too fast. Let me take a breath. Saying that the absolute value of f of x, y is less than or equal to the absolute value of 3y, it means that f of x, y has got to be in between 3 absolute value of y and negative 3 absolute value of y. That's what that means. It means that it is closer to 0 than 3 absolute value of y is. And then we can do sort of a squeeze theorem thing. We can say the limit as x, y goes to 0, 0 on the left, and the limit as x, y goes to 0, 0 on the right, well, the y is going to 0, so that means these are both going to be 0 on either side. So we put in a limit to all three of them, and then you could say, well, by squeeze theorem, the limit f of x, y, as x, y goes to 0, 0, is equal to 0. Now, like I said, that problem's a little tricky, and I don't really expect you to be able to do this sort of thing on your own at the drop of a hat. This is really the province of what's known as real analysis, sometimes called advanced calculus. Um, so we're not really going to have any of these proves the limit do exist. More likely, we're going to do a whole bunch of problems like the last couple of prove that it doesn't exist. Okay, so with that out of the way, we now talk about continuity. And they are very sim similar concepts. We need the limit to exist, and we need the limit to be equal to the value of the function f and the function has to have a value. So, for instance, in the last few examples, or specifically in the last one, the limit did exist at 0, 0, but if you plugged in 0, 0 here, you would get a divide by 0. The function would not exist there. So, while the limit exists, it's not continuous. And like I said a while ago, most of the functions that we deal with in this class will be continuous anywhere they're defined. On their domain, they are continuous. So if you can get a formula that you can easily plug in a number, then it's probably continuous at that point. All right. Let's um, do some examples here. Like I said, they're not that different. So, any of the problems where the limit didn't exist, it's not continuous. So these are all not continuous at 0, 0. Although they are continuous at every other point in R squared. So you plug in any other x, y pair besides 0, 0, they will exist. So it means all these functions are continuous everywhere except 0, 0. So if I were to ask you on a test, like, is this function continuous? You would say, yes, it is continuous at every point except 0, 0. I know a lot of people will do this really simple mistake. They'll say it's not continuous at 0, 0, and forget to say that it is continuous everywhere else. And I would take off a point for that, so be careful. All right. This problem, so this is the one we just did. And we just said the limit here at 0, 0 is equal to 0. So this is a piecewise function where we plugged the hole. We said the limit is 0. This first line here would be undefined. We can't plug in 0, 0 to this. But we know the limit is 0. We know every path you take gives us 0. 
So we will just say, oh, by the way, at 0, 0, it's equal to exactly what you expected. And that makes it continuous. So this problem is continuous because at 0, 0, because the limit there is 0 and the value there is also 0. Let's do a couple more examples. We're almost done. The hard part's done. This function, where is it continuous? All right. Well, this is a fraction. It's a rational function. That means it's continuous on its domain. So this is essentially the same question as, what's the domain of this function? You'll notice in this case, the input is 3D. So we're talking about measuring temperatures in space or something like that. So let's, let's work this out. f of x, y, z equals 1 over x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 1. So domain, we would want to say x squared plus y squared plus z squared is not allowed to equal 1. One. Well, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1 would be a sphere. So this means that f is continuous, CTS is short for continuous, on, let's do it this way, the set of all x, y, z, where the length of the x, y, z vector is not equal to 1. That would be, I think, the best way to say it. As long as the length of the vector is not 1, then we're not on the surface of the sphere, and that means we're in the domain, which means it's also continuous. In fact, this would be a jump discontinuity. Jump. Because near the surface of the sphere, the denominator would be zero. But if this part were, if it were a little bigger than one, we'd have positive infinity. If it were a little less than one, we'd have negative infinity. So, yeah. So if you come from one side, it'll get super hot. But if you come from the other side, it gets super cold. And somehow you have some perfect insulator that's keeping the heat from transferring. Okay, so yeah, like I said, then most of the time we don't have to do this whole thing of trying to prove continuity. We just say, if it's in the domain, then it's continuous. The piecewise functions are the exception because they don't have just one rule. They have two different rules defining them. And so for that reason, if it doesn't work for, it might work on for one rule and not the other, and so the limit wouldn't exist. So here's another example x, y squared over x squared plus y fourth. Now, it is possible to guess these just by counting the degrees. You can say, well, the top, the highest power is third degree, because one power of x and two powers of y. The bottom, the highest power is fourth. So I'm thinking the bottom shrinks faster, so it goes to infinity at zero. But, again, that's just a guess. So we are going to try to get some paths But we're going to try to do a trick, which is to do every line at once. Now, let's see how this works. And you can feel free to do this on a test or quiz or whatever. It might save you time because, like, we saw in one of the examples earlier, we had two lines. We had three lines. We had the P1 and P2, which were both coming on the axes both gave zero, but then a third line gave us a different answer. So what we can say here is that all the lines, whatever they are, going towards zero, zero, pretend these are all straight lines, my drawing is terrible, but all these lines we've written as y equals mx. So we're going to do a trick here. We say f of x, y is x, y squared over x squared plus y fourth. 
that's when x, y is non zero, zero. And zero when x, y is equal to zero, zero. So we're going to say the limit as x, y approaches zero, zero along, let's say, path M. That is to say, the path M will be y equals mx. So it covers all these different lines because every one of them can be written as y equals mx. So we'll do the same trick here. We will say we will replace y with mx, and we will say x, then we'll approach 0. Um, could be from the left or right. So we won't say left or right this time. We'll just say x approaches 0. And if this works, it shouldn't matter. Because we're hoping that it gives us the same thing. But we'll see. All right, so that means we replace the y with the mx. So we get x mx squared over x squared plus mx fourth is the limit is x to zero of m squared x to the third over x squared plus m fourth x fourth. All right, now this is a one variable calculus problem, so let's go ahead and simplify this down a bit. This should equal, let's see, I will divide by x squared top and bottom, so it'll be limit as x to 0 of m squared x over 1 plus m fourth x squared. So I just divide on x squared from each term. And uh, now that I have done this, I can plug in 0 for x, and I get 0 over 1 plus 0 is 0. So along every line, it gives us 0. And again, you're thinking, ooh, does that mean I'm done? Is the limit 0? Well, that only applies to straight lines. Let's do one another example here. So let's say we were to come along the path x equals y squared, a parabola. Well, we'd say, okay, the limit, and in this case, we're going to replace the x with y squared. So we'll say the limit as x, let me do this properly. Let's call this just p. I don't know, P-A. Just, just picking a name here. P-A, uh, 0, 0, F of X, Y. So we will replace, let's see, the X with Y squared. So this will give us Y to the fourth on top. And on the bottom will give us Y squared squared plus y fourth and the limit will be as y approaches zero from positive side which comes limit as y goes to zero plus of y fourth over this is y fourth here y squared squared so it becomes two y fourth which is the limit y goes to zero plus of one half which is one half which is not the same as zero. So the limit does not exist at zero, zero. So we can say then that F is continuous on the set of all X, Y in R squared, where x, y is not equal to 0, 0. Either one of them can be 0, but they can't both be. Um, oh, that should not equal. Excuse me. So, 
I hope what I've impressed upon you is that it can be hard to show whether a limit exists and you should always be checking more paths if you're asked to show if one doesn't exist. But if a bunch of them give the same thing, you still can't be confident. So for the most part in this class, we will be doing with cases where either it's really obvious limit exists because you can just plug in or you can just try a couple paths and find one that doesn't give the same thing as the others. And going any more detail about limits is for real analysis. Everything you've seen in this video should be sufficient for what we need to do in this course. All right, I will see you Monday.